Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through a little bit of an introduction to Unit 3 for Digital Electronics. This is called Sequential Logic, Sequence. Sequence means order, okay? So everything that we've done so far in this class has been about just flipping switches and having probes come on, lights sh show up, whatever it is, we're going to make something happen because of the switches that we've used, okay? The order of those switches does not matter, it's completely up to me. So what I want to show you here is just a quick circuit, okay? We built this earlier this year using demultiplexers, okay? And this demultiplexer circuit, it's pretty simple. Based on what A and B are, we can have different letters appear one at a time, right? But you'll notice here that the order that I'm flipping the switches completely determines which letter shows up at any given time. Now we, as the person viewing this, knows that it's supposed to spell the word open. But the circuit doesn't know. I mean, it's just a machine, okay? We have to tell it what it's supposed to do. So all it knows is that based on what A and B are doing, which is up to me, the user, that's going to determine which letter shows up, okay? This is called combinational logic because we are determining the circumstances, the inputs, and the outputs that we want to appear. Most of the circuits we've built have had AND gates and OR gates, inverters, NOT gates, um, NAND, NOR, exclusive OR, exclusive NOR. We've used probes as outputs. We've used seven segment displays as outputs. What I want to tell you is none of that stuff is going to go away. Okay? When we talk about sequential logic, we're going to have that combinational logic piece still involved. We're still going to have switches involved. We're still going to have probes and seven segment displays involved. But what we're going to do is we're going to add on to it. We're going to use flip flops. Those are what we're going to use. Those are going to draw in a memory element. In other words, wouldn't it be really nice if we could build that last circuit to say O is now, so P comes next. P is now, so E comes next. E is now, so N comes next. That's the sequencing part of it, the ordering part of it that we want to bring in. Okay, so we can determine then what order things should happen if we can add some extra circuitry to our logic. Okay, in addition to that, we want to be able to determine how quickly it's supposed to go through. How fast do we want the word open to scroll through? And that's going to be run by an external clock, which is one of the main features of sequential logic, is this external clock that drives the circuit and determines when things happen. Okay, so what we're going to do, in other words, is this. Here's an example of a combinational logic circuit. I'm going to combine it with some D flip-flops, and I'm going to make it run sequentially, okay? So the whole point of Unit 3 is to use then what are called flip-flops, these little devices over here, along with an external clock, which we can see here. And now, basically what we're doing is we're flipping through the different combinations of switches, A and B. We're going from 0, 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 0 to 1, 1. Okay? And your job as a student is to understand how to build circuits with these devices. That's what sequential logic is, forcing circuits to address an input or output in a particular order at a particular speed so that it can accomplish a particular task. Hopefully this introduction makes sense, and hopefully you understand the task that lies ahead in the next few months.